In today's video, I'm going to be trying to wire up this RPM gauge and get it to work. See, with the points ignition, these will work, these older ones. But these new ones, they try to tell you that you have to pay $400 or whatever and have it converted where you can run them with the HEI distributor. And well, a good buddy of mine was telling me about this. It's called the RPM gauge signal filter. It's just this little box and a lot of new cars even come with them. Like even the Camaros of the 80s have this little thing on the firewall that looks like a cool little wire coming off of it. And what this does is filters the, the signals and makes it where a RPM gauge can read it. So without a signal filter, even on the 80s Camaro, they won't work. This is the wiring diagram here they sent me. So I'm thinking there's not much many places to mount in this car, but I figured, you know, if I'm sitting in here, I'll just go ahead and use a screw right here and bolt it in. And then I'll run my wires in through this dash pad. Cause I like to be able to see, and plus I'll still be able to see my vaults and everything. It won't be in the way. Cause I mean, I could put it up here, but I don't like that. That's up in your face. And I'd had to drill holes in this stuff and this stuff's never had drills. I mean, holes are drilled in it. I mean, if it was already drilled up and stuff, I might would do that, but why molest something that's this good and doesn't have any holes already in it. So, uh, hop to it and see if this sucker will work. Well, to do this, I have to take this dash pad off, like I think I said a minute ago. And these pillars right here that I put on a wall back. So that means we're going to have to come right back off. Great. Maybe they'll come back on if I don't lose the screws. <laughs> well, let's hop to it again. Now, to take all it off, you have access to my one speaker. And all this horse crap. It's going to be fun running wires to this. Well, let's start hacking some stuff up. Make sure y'all remind me to plug this red wire back up because uh, if I don't, I'm not gonna have any tunes on the old AM radio when I turn it on. Don't let me forget. So let me tell you, I do hate wiring. It's not fun. So I'm gonna start with the easiest thing, which is the RPM signal from the car. This white wire on this box. What I'm gonna do, as there's this hole in the dash that kind of comes down. You might see that hole right in there where that little red format is. I'm gonna run it in there and it's gonna come through this hole in the firewall. And then after that, I'm gonna loop it in with these other wires and vacuum lines and everything that runs down the firewall. And I'm gonna put this style connector on it and put it on the negative side of the coil. And then, after I do that, next should be the black, which is the engine ground, which that little box has the engine ground on it, and so does this. So I might tie them in together and ground them out on something. I don't know, we'll find that out. This white one is for the light, and then the green, it should be the signal to the gauge, so green to green on the box. So that just leaves me with the black on this which i will figure out either where i want to put it or if i want to just have two different grounds which i might end up doing and then i'll have to run the red one to i'm pretty sure the positive side of the coil will work so yeah maybe this ain't so bad i don't know we'll see hopefully it works I don't want to burn the car down, right? <laughs> Good thing you got a fire extinguisher in there somewhere. Well, I got the wire cut. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of slack in here in the cabin. And we'll run this wire and crimp them into each other because that is where it goes to. So hopefully, I'll still be able to talk, tuck this little box in there without any problems. Okay, so the red one needs to go to 12 volt powered switch so i'm just gonna run it to this fuse panel down there and find with a multimeter which one gets 12 volts for the key on and then i will run this other black one somewhere in the engine bay and ground it out probably to the engine and i'll have to do the same for the tachometer this runs to the green on the tachometer 
And now then I should have one more ground, which I will from the tachometer that I will probably I'll probably screw it in here or somewhere. Actually that that'd be perfect. That little piece that goes right here, I just stick the wire there. And that will leave me with a light wire. And I can hook that up last if it actually works. Okay, well, I ran the red wire. I already got it tied in here. So that leaves me with the green to the tachometer. And the black from this and the black from the tack. So those blacks are both ground. So it says engine ground in the actual pamphlet, so. I can probably run it from, let's see, we'll run it and run it to anywhere really. I'll find somewhere to run that. And then after I run that ground, I'm, like I said before, I was gonna run that other ground from the tack to the actual car itself. And then that will leave me with the green wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and run my grounds, hook up the green one, and we'll fire it up and well, see if it'll I'm work. losing daylight, but well, if I something turn on this is post right here on my head that I just ran the wire in through for my ground. So now I did this correctly. Yeah, I only got these two wires, so this is gonna be my ground black green to hook into the tachometer. And then I should still, wait a second. Why do I still have a black? Oh, I hadn't hooked it up, okay. So I should have, I hooked up the blacks together. Leaves me with a green, which I will hook into this green wire. And then I ground this out to the dash. And hopefully that will work. Well, I couldn't get my tachometer to work, my Bonneville one. I probably wired it up wrong, I don't know. But I found this on Marketplace. This is actually a Sun Pro. Got a pretty good deal on it. I'm not 100% sure if it'll work, but it was sitting in the guy's garage for over 30 years. So I'm gonna take some steel wool and buff it out and polish it and clean it up really good. You wanna get quadruple white if you're gonna polish chrome because it doesn't scratch it. It'll only knock the rust and stuff off with some effort. But for the deal I got on this, I think it's pretty good. And look how easy that needle moves. So I think we're good. And it's already set to what I needed at. Or actually I might bump it up here. There we go, the 5800 RPMs. On the tack, I got this one strand that's just got two blacks. I'm not sure if they're grounds. That's when I grounded them out, but they didn't work. And then if I can get this to focus, I have a black, a red, a green, and a white, which I know the white's for a light. And then there's a bare wire in the center. It's hard to get that to focus, but I didn't hook that up because I don't know what it goes to, if any. Well, I think I found out why it's not working. So these wires run into here. And that green's not even hooked up, or that bare wire, that'd explain why they're all different. Someone's been in here before. You can tell by the boogered up screws. And has tried to rewire it, so, and this looks factory probably. So I'm just gonna leave these and take this off and run the ground in here. And run new, these two wires new, and I think this should be a three wire then. Okay, well, on that Sun Pro tank, it had like seven wires. It's got these two blacks here, and it had this wired into it, which is a white, a green, a red, a silver, and a black. And well, I popped the cover off because I could not get this thing to work. And this is telephone wire, guys. Someone tried to rewire this. And so this is my positive, and then this is my uh, negative here. So this is really only a two wire, well, Four if you count these for the light, but it's really a two wire tachometer. So I'm gonna rewire it and go ahead and put it back together and see if it works. Hopefully it does, but Bubba has been in here with his telephone wire. I was wondering why this was in there. It just does not look right. Uh, no wonder it's been in a guy's garage for 30 years. <laughs> now that I have it rewired, 
I'm going to simply run an alligator clip from the fuse panel here to my positive, and then I will run an alligator clip to the negative side of the cool. Well, guys, I haven't seen this before, but I also don't wire up tacks very often. Um, I hooked it to that side of the cool, right? And when I turn the switch on, boom, over here. Okay, and well, when the car would not crank, so I unhooked it, this alligator clip. Fired right up. Then while I was running, I clipped it on there, car died. So I think maybe it needs to go to the positive side of the cool. But it does act as a kill switch. So just toss a dang RPM gauge like this in your car if you go out of town or something. Clip it on there. And ba boom, you got a homemade kill switch. Just don't forget you got an RPM gauge stuck up under the dash. All right, one crank. Well, I think this means that the tech is good, but I still need the signal filter for it, which I don't know how I'm gonna hook that up. Well, I swapped it, and now when I turn the switch, it does the same thing. And when I crank it, watch what it does. <laughs> So I'm gonna try and hook it into the signal filter. That's HEI giving the bad well, What I tried was I hooked the red to the green, because this is a signal wire, and the black to the uh unit center distributor. And this is what happened. It shocked the heck out of me when I shut it off. Kinda worked. Well, it kinda did work. After some research, a transmitter box is required to run these tacks. So I come up with the executive decision to just buy a new tack because it was cheaper. Well, got me a package in the mail the other day. I don't know what it could be for or what kind of car I could be putting it on. I'll just let y'all decide, I guess. But I'm pretty fond with it. Moving tack. And it's even got the old school look with the new electronics. Well, this, none of them tacks worked, so I went out and bought my new moon eyes. I was going to put it on the column, but it's too fat where it hits everywhere. So I'm going to stick with the original plan and mount it like this and spin it around and bolt it on. I think that'll look pretty good. Well, I don't know if my signal filter blew, but I could not get it to work, so I unhooked it all, which I really don't need it anyways. And this is what we got. <laughs> signal filter was the problem but I did get it wired up even get the light wired up and I think I'm gonna go ahead and replace some of these lights on the dash because a couple of them's dim with LEDs then I'm gonna put it all back together and uh I think it'll look pretty good well it's not exactly dark out here but this is the brightest setting see the tack you can see but you can barely see everything else and you can see the radio, that's good. That's good. Parking selector's kind of dull. I'll have to... I think I'm just gonna go ahead and buy new bulbs and for the clock and everything. But the tech does really bright. That's good. Well, I have been fighting and fighting, but I think this is where it's gonna stay. And I tightened it pretty well. I left it at kind of an angle. I can always move it later if I want, but... I think it looks pretty good right there. It kind of looks stock almost, but I think the stock one's actually mounted up here on this pillar on that piece of trim. Well, it works. I would say that's pretty good. And that'll help me with tuning as long with an AR-FAR gauge that I will be getting soon. Appreciate y'all watching and y'all have a good one.